Welcome guys on my channel. Today I'm going to modify the UVK5-8 which is currently the most famous transceiver within the amateur radio community and I can say that it is currently the best radio you can get for this price of maybe 23 or 25 euros on the market and this is not all. You can update the original firmware uh, by the new custom-made firmware and after this hack or after this modification you're able to receive also single sideband signals on VHF UHF bands. You can also receive AM signals on UHF VHF bands and of course the FM signals. On the other side you can also receive the air bands in AM modulation or you can also receive a SATCOM frequencies and FM modulation and the best thing is that you can also receive a short waves signals. So you can go down below 50 megahertz as well and receive uh, on 10 meter the SSB signals or uh, beacons or Morse codes on CW and also you are able to go to CB band or 12 meter band or 15 or 17 meter band. So this is actually this radio able to do after the firmware modification. Okay, and uh, the reason why is needed any more modifications. Yeah, there is one reason this radio has its um, hardware limitation uh, because of the chip which is used inside. I mean the chip of receiver. So we are not able to go below 15 megahertz because of these limits. And therefore, I found and I purchased on the AliExpress this very tiny PCB board, which includes this uh, new uh, receiver chip, which is uh, 4732. Uh, and this chip is currently able to receive on much lower frequencies so we should be able to go to the long waves so across the all short wave bands so i can't wait how it will work uh, as you can see that all the components on the pcb boards on the pcb board are already populated soldered and uh, there actually you don't need to do much uh, you see that this uh, this pcb board is a perfectly uh, uh, shaped and uh, should fit inside this receiver and on the current PCB board. Also, there were <coughs> um, a few components in the kit. So also this uh, tiny, uh, this tiny um, resistor, and also these uh, capacitors. This will be really challenge uh, because these capaci capacitors are microscopic. Yeah, they are very small and I have to be very careful to solder those capacitors on their place. The main problem maybe I see is that in the kit I didn't find any guide. So it just uh, uh, components and the PCB board and that's all. Yeah, but the manufacturer or the seller of this uh, PCB board uh, sent me already some guides in a digital form. So I have some pictures and some short video. So I will try to do my best to find out how we can do this modification. And this I would like to show you.
Well, so let me explain uh, what parts and components we need to remove and uh, which one we need to replace. So the reason why I flipped this uh, display is that right underneath this display is a little choke and we need to uh, remove this choke and replace it with supply choke which was in the kit. And also we need to replace this tiny capacitor which is right here for a new one which was supplied in the kit here. So those tiny capacitors are 100 nanofarad. And then we need to remove, not replace, but remove those two components, possibly capacitors from the PCB board. So this one and this one. They have to be completely removed. And also this chip have to be removed as well. And uh, then finally we can place this little additional board to its place right here. And we need to solder those paths to the PCB board. And uh, also we need to make a little jumpers and we need to connect this little path to this capacitor right here, to this point. And this little path, we need to solder to this end of resistor. And then it should be done. And after flash the firmware in the radio, it should work. Okay, the board is clean. So here we can see the place where was the chip I removed. This is the place where I removed the capacitors from it. And also the place where will be a new 100 nanofarad capacitor which is supplied in the kit. And also the place where was the older uh, choke and this choke will be replaced by the new one. So here I prepared already this little choke. I'm going to put it in its new place over here and therefore I had to remove this little screw. And it should be connected to this point which is ground and this is a hot end of the choke. Okay, choke is there and this is my first component replaced in this radio. I think this is the worst part of this <laughs> modification to replace this 100 nanofarad tiny capacitor. I have uh, five pieces of them. I think uh, maybe in case I would uh, lost some of them. So I have some spare parts also over here. So as you see how tiny it is, it is like a grain of the sand. You can see that.
one end is in place. Now the second one. Absolutely perfect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. Okay, so the choke has been replaced. And also this little 100 nanofarad has been replaced, as you can see it in detail. It is uh, nicely soldered to its place over here. So I will leave these two places empty and also here because this is the place for my next step and this is this additional board. So my next step will be connect this board to the main board. So I need to solder those pads over here. I need to make two jumpers over here and then I need to connect the ground over here and that should be the final thing and the radio should work to achieve a better stability uh, before installing this uh, little board I prepared this little piece of a self-adhesive tape which is double-sided and it is uh, transparent as you see so it's not visible and of course it's it's still better to have it here So as you see here on both sides and now I am going to stick to stick this uh, little board on its place and to fix it. I'm looking at those marks right here. Okay, no. Okay, so you see that it is holding on its place and the, the pads should match with the pads on this additional board. So the ground has been soldered as you can see and also of course I have to clean this uh, after. I soldered also those pads on both sides and now I'm going to do a continuity check if the pads are properly connected to the main board. Yeah, it is okay. And the final thing what we need to do is to create this little jumper or actually two jumpers. 
The first one will be used here from this pad to the upper end of this tiny resistor right next to him. So here will be connected this little jumper. And a second jumper will be connected from here to this end of capacitor right here. So from here to here. And for this, I'm going to use a little piece of wire and two little wires I will use as a jumper. Yeah, this is going to be a challenge because this uh, little resistor is very close to the additional board and uh, the jumper have to be very very short but yeah I made it you see this resistor and you see also the jumper on it right right there this little piece of wire so this is connected properly and also the second jumper is right here and the little piece of wire is connected uh, there is I, I was cleaning the board and there are some remnants over here so you see this uh, little wire and it is connected to this uh, part of the capacitor and as you see that it is soldered also properly the capacitor I replaced uh, before this is 100 nanofarad capacitor right here you see that it is also soldered And those two uh, components have been removed from here. And also, here you can see the connections between the main board and additional board. These pads over here. Two pads over here. And also over here. Guys, I just found a little problem I did during soldering this additional pad to the main board. So be careful if you will be soldering those pads. The traces are so soft and easy to be burned. As you can see, I had to create another patch which I burned out before during a soldering job. So. I had to make the jumper from this pad to this pad here and this is connected right there to the additional board. So be careful when you will soldering this thing and you not uh, burn this pad or the trace as I did. Upgrade is done and now let me complete the radio.
Okay guys, so now the practical test uh, with my external small modified magnetic loop antenna and this modified uh, Quangsheng UVK5 CEC firmware. <clears throat> so I'm currently, as you can see, on 20 meter band. Today we have a poor propagation, just a few stations on 20 meters, but I, I'm still able to receive something here. So if you turn on the radio, the radio will boot into the normal mode, as you can see the memories on the VHF and UHF bands. All of what you need to do is hold the zero button and turn this radio into the full mode uh, shortwave mode. So here you can see the modulation alpha mic AM and very nice large S meter. If you wish to change to the single sideband demodulation, you need to push the F or hold the F button. Radio will turn on into the Lima Sierra Bravo or short press the F button will turn back to the upper sideband and here is the FT8 signal just one thing what I can little criticize is that the audio output is very low but signals are clearly to be heard and you can tune one kilohertz step or you can change the step with this button scan you see that you can change 100 kilohertz for example 1 megahertz or 10 megahertz. No, only 1 megahertz. Very weak. There is something like AGC also or LNA like low noise amplifier so with the uh, menu button we can go to the LNA and with the side buttons we can change the attenuation 0, 1 or AGC on I prefer to use the attenuation 0 and the audio output is a little stronger but it is still very weak okay let me try another band like 40 meter there is a list of the bands if you push the zero button you can go to the band list if you push it again there are another bands so if you push uh, the number let's say one which is 40 meter i can go to one and I'm on 40 meter. Now I need to tune the antenna. And antenna has been tuned to 40 meters.
Also bandwidth. This is broadband or broadcast band. This is AM modulation and I can change to 5 kilohertz. There is probably missing 5 kilohertz. Okay, Oscar November 5, Juliet Oscar Mobile, Echo Alpha 5, November Whiskey, over. 